Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another short little unboxing video to share with you guys. I read an article that said, if you don't get the attention of your viewers within the first like two seconds, the vast majority of them stop watching your video. So, did it work? Let's go ahead and uh, see what's in this package. I believe this is, yeah, this is from Remit. Uh, thank you very much, Remit. Uh, I'll go ahead and link it right down below as per usual. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Okay. Um, let's see what we've got here. Okay, pretty typical Remit box. Remit's been doing, I, you know, I gotta be honest with you, I still don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I think they've been doing a good job, and they haven't corrected me. So, <laughs> I, but the knives that they've been uh, releasing here have been pretty cool. It's, uh, it's really hard for me to tell. Every time I guess and say, oh, it's a heavy pouch, then it's not. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What the heck is this one called? They did, um, okay, so right off the bat, this, uh, this is, wait, what color is the titanium behind it? Okay, it's black. I think the contrast, <laughs> the contrast is making the titanium behind it look brown, but I don't believe that that is actually the case. Is it? Is the titanium brown? What is happening here? Okay, maybe it is. Um, let's go ahead and get the blade out. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, you can. Okay, kind of giving me... Um, is it the Bravo? The SOCOM Bravo, right? I mean, it's a still a different blade shape, but it kind of... The way that they've done this in this ledge right here, very... very uh, very Optimus Prime. Oh, it's a, uh, oh, okay. Whole bunch of different companies suddenly coming out with pivot locks. But that is cool and unexpected. Remit, I had no idea. I, they didn't even mention it. They just said, hey, you want to look at this? Um, okay. So, the name of this knife will be linked down in the description. This is just an unboxing. And first impressions, I don't have any information other than they said, hey, do you want to look at it? So, uh, first impressions here, something that really stands out to me besides the almost brown titanium, which is a little bit odd. The polished titanium accents are pretty cool. This appears to be a separate piece that is held on by the pivot. Now, I don't know if these cover plates, these shield plates are necessary to house the internals for this system. I do not know how this differs from the other two that I've handled here recently. I really am wanting to disengage this with my finger, but I can't. It has to be disengaged with the button, which is pretty cool, actually. Now, can it be deployed like this? Yes, it absolutely can. This is very fidgety. Look at this. Here. It's pretty fun. If you're wondering, am I having a good time? Yes, I am. Uh, but, yeah, I do like these colorful accents. I would, I would very much hope that we have um, other color options. I like the gold. I'm not sure how I feel about... It's like the darkest tone of brown before it becomes black on the spectrum. Or maybe just dark gray. It's in between, like, very nitrogen-rich soil and the outside of a of an ancient, like, uh, aircraft carrier. <laughs> That's, I, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, but uh, is that a, um, a slot for tritium? Almost certainly. Almost certainly. Let's compare it to my flashlight that has the different colors there. Yeah, I think you probably could put a little bit of tritium in there if you wanted to. Or maybe a couple. It's thick enough to glue it in and have one on each side. I don't know. Was that intentional? I wish that they had left a divider slot in between. Like milled it down to this little center area so that you could like definitely you know, get some glue in there. Uh, some glass glue and uh, get some, uh, you know, tritium on each side. But that's cool if that was their intention. Maybe it wasn't. It just appears to be the exact same size. Solidity of the lock feels absolute. Yep, that's good enough for me. Uh, this is cool. Um, now, choke up. 
if you squeeze it, does it disengage? <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> does that work? Yeah, it does. So listen, you guys got to be careful with this. This has a shallow, this, this is all the surface contact that's keeping the blade in place, which is fine. But if you're going to choke up on this, which they clearly intend for you to do because of this area right here, the natural position of your index finger is exactly on that blade. So if you're doing this and you squeeze it, it's going to disengage. So this is why some of these newer designs have that secondary safety, right? A lot of people are like, oh, I don't like this. But these these pivot button locks are cool, and we're clearly we're clearly coming into a new age of the knife world where this is going to be a thing, right? So to rem it, and every other company that's doing it, boy, that detent is heavy. You can get the reverse flick, but it's not the most optimal position. It's really, I say detent. What it takes to, re well, it actually it is. Is it a traditional detent ball? Hold on, let's take a look at the inside. Sorry. Holy moly! I'm uh, sorry, I had it set on power of the sun. Um, yeah, there's a little detent ball. Okay, so they just have a really strong detent, which is fine, and it works well for the uh, system here. This should have been carved out a little bit more. I understand we got a little bit of a designy frame here going on, so they're trying to make it look cool. Uh, I'm nitpicking this. It's it's not bad. I'm just pointing out what to expect if you pick this up, right? If you're going to use this, you really need to keep your hands behind that pivot. You really do, because this is all it's going to take, right? You got to keep your hands back. And if you, you got your hands up here, you really have to be cognizant of where this part of your finger is. If you do that, the lock is plenty solid, right? It's essentially the pivot, a mechanism inside of the pivot operating a liner lock, which is cool. And it does make it different than the other pivot actuated locks of this type that I have looked at over just like the last few weeks. Um, but yeah, and then from this area, if you're gonna choke up, you need to go out of your way to keep your finger back and off of that pivot, completely off of that pivot. The actuation is smooth, and it's kind of one of those things where, okay, so uh, you remember, you know, when we uh, when I reviewed the Kaiser Cormorant, I think, that button, and everybody said, you just got to screw it in some more. Well, I did. I screwed it all the way in, and it still had an enormous amount of travel, and I didn't like that because I could feel all of the friction of the button sliding away from the tang of the blade where it's supposed to lock in, and it made this, right? The knife itself was good. I just didn't like all that travel. Here we have a situation where it doesn't have hardly any travel and the lockup is completely solid and there's no stick. But the downside to that is, is because of the location of the lock, you have to be careful. The remedy for this is a sliding safety, right? Other companies have, have done this. Remit, I love this idea. I would love to see this incorporated on a ton of different models. This is great, but we need something keeping that lock in place if we want to utilize the ergonomic zones that are clearly meant to be utilized on this knife. Um, yeah, the blade is super cool, right? Uh, it's like always, oh, the blade's not very utilitarian. Shut up. It looks cool though, right? We got this, uh, what do they call this? Is this, is Rem at the company that says, they call this like the pearlescent? It's like a glass blasting or some sort of special media blasting that we have more of a heavier bead blast in here on this flat. And then these are like machine satin. It looks almost looks like a hand rub satin finish there. Cool though. Very stubby Microtech Socom Bravo-esque, right? This kind of gives me that, that vibe. Um, pretty cool though. And I do like the polished titanium. I'd love to see more of that. I think that is really neato. Okay. I'm going to need to carry this and use it and find out exactly how iffy that spot is, but neat, definitely. Knowing Remet, probably not an insane price tag considering you're getting M390, which by the way, they have been listing their M390 as 60 to 62. I would venture to guess that's the case here. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I'll give those details in the final review. Um, but given the case that you have titanium and M390 from Remet, it's probably not an insane price tag for those materials and, you know, premium Chinese manufacturing. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Please, Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have 
lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.